Andrea Cantillo. Stories. Stories. Andrea Cantillo. I worked as a journalist for over 15 years. When I was in college, someone in my class asked our professor, how much do journalists make? And he was honest. He said about $200 a week. Y'all, that is $800 a month. And when you live at home with your parents and they're paying all your bills, that's a fortune. <laughs> but when you move out and you're on your own, not so much. <laughs> I was officially a broke journalist. But I thought, hey, I'm a journalist. So I'm going to go and meet all kinds of people, like maybe a rich husband that could support my journalism habit. But as luck would have it, I married Sweet Marcus, <laughs> also a broke journalist. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, during our first couple of years of marriage, Marcus and I did not earn a lot of money, but we heard a lot of interesting stories. My coworkers like to joke that I was the freak animal reporter because I wrote a lot about freak animals. I, I wasn't a freak animal. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was interviewing a lady about her emu farm and we were in the emu enclosure with the emus and they were picking at my hair and grabbing on my notebook and trying to steal my pen and the woman just kept talking like that wasn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> Another time I was interviewing a woman who had Maine Coon show cats. Now, if you're not familiar with Maine Coon cats, they're about this big, and they weigh at least 40 pounds. And right in the middle of that interview, one of those cats just jumped right on my back. This woman at least acknowledged it, and she said, Honey, I'm, I'm sorry, he just does that. <laughs> she didn't try to get that cat off me or anything. <laughs> my first freak animal story was my first job, my first story, my first job right out of college. And my boss said, hey, Andrea, we need you to go and interview a family that has some cats that have extra toes on each of their paws. And I said, really? This is what I went to school for? <laughs> Apparently so. The photographer and I went out there, and indeed, the cats had six toes on each of their paws. Ernest Hemingway had cats that had six toes on each of their paws. Ernest Hemingway was famous. His cats were famous. These cats that I saw? Not famous. <laughs> I later found out from a veterinarian that extra toes on cats is a sign of inbreeding, not something extra special. Eventually, I worked my ways up through the ranks to be an assistant editor. And I still got to write the occasional freak animal story. But for the most part, I would assign stories to other people and then they would come back and tell me their stories. Marcus worked at the same paper at that time. And he was a police and fire reporter. And the police and fire beat has a lot of horrible stories. But they also have some that are interesting and some that make you scratch your head. Like the giant inflatable SpongeBob on a restaurant in Deer Park that caught the restaurant on fire and everybody had to evacuate. Mm -hmm. Or the suspect in Pasadena who begged the police not to arrest him even though he found marijuana in his pocket because he'd just come from a party and those weren't his pants. <laughs> or the 2.30 a.m. call that we got to let Marcus know that someone had stolen a fire truck. Let me paint this picture for you. Some guy had been out drinking all night long, and so he decided he would drive to the fire department, park neatly in a parking spot, walk in, start a fire truck, and drive it through the breakaway doors. And for this guy, it was go big or go home. <laughs> because this guy didn't steal one of their little pickup trucks or their pumper truck. Nah, this guy stole a ladder truck. That is the biggest fire truck that they have. And he drove that fire truck right down the road. And he might still be driving that fire truck today if he hadn't stopped for a red light <laughs> and flooded the engine when he tried to get it started again. <laughs> And that's where the police found him, stopped at a red light, drunk in the fire truck. <laughs> the fire chief joked with us that he's glad that the police had found him first, otherwise he would have killed him. <laughs> At least we think he was joking. But one thing that we didn't include in the paper that I was always wondering about is how drunk 
do you have to be to talk yourself into stealing a fire truck? <laughs> I've been drunk enough with my friends that we might have talked each other into stealing a fire truck, but never drunk enough to go on my own with an outrageous idea like stealing a fire truck. I hope it was worth it for him. Maybe it was on his bucket list. I don't know. I don't know anything about any of the people that I wrote stories about. My job as a journalist was to capture a snapshot in their life. One chapter, their book continued on. Maybe that fire truck guy went to jail, or maybe he paid a hefty fine, or maybe he's a fireman now. <laughs> maybe those people with those six-toed cats introduced some new cats into the mix, <laughs> or spayed and neutered their pets like responsible pet owners do. I don't know. I don't know anything about those people. But I do know what's happened with uh, me and Marcus, and we've talked about it, and next time we get married, we are not choosing broke journalists, no matter how good their stories are. <laughs>